إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوه هذا صراط مستقيم. Respected viewers, welcome to Truth Unveiled. My name is Monica Said, your host. Our topic of discussion today is a resurrection and accession 2,000 years in the past. A historical event happened in the history of this world. A man called Jesus is said to have been crucified. Three days later, he rose from the dead and then he ascended to heaven and quartered himself there ever since then up to current day. Do the Muslims hold the same belief we are yet to discover. With me in the studios are two guests. On my right hand side is Mr. Faisal Chiemba, the officer in charge of National Annual Convention, Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, Uganda. Next to him is Mr. Adam Hamid Sembajwe, the General Secretary Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, Uganda. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Truth Unveiled. Mr. Faisal, all the four Gospels of the New Testament speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our viewers would want to know, as an Ahmadi Muslim, do you hold the same belief that Jesus Christ resurrected? Resurrection, in uh, simple language, means rising from the dead. If they had used the word resuscitation, we would be in agreement with our Christian brothers. Because if you read the New Testament carefully, especially the four Gospels, and uh, go through the events that occurred before the incident of crucifixion, during crucifixion, and after crucifixion, you will come to one conclusion, that Jesus Christ survived an accursed death on the cross. Now, since Jesus Christ did not die, the question of him rising from the dead does not arise. A I little, think we are together. A bit, Mr. Faisal. I don't know whether it is a slip of a tongue. Did you say Jesus Christ did not die on the cross? Yeah, I think I made myself clear. He survived death on the cross. Continue. So, all the stories the narration, narrations that are found in the four Gospels or in the New Testament for that matter, they are not based on any concrete evidence. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is mentioned in the four Gospels, the three synoptic Gospels and the Gospel of John. There is no doubt about that. But if you allow me, I will take you through those places where resurrection is mentioned. And you will come to a conclusion by yourself after hearing what I'm going to read for you, that this is not enough evidence to show that Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. For example, the first mention of resurrection is to be found in the gospel according to Matthew in chapter 28. The words that will catch our attention is, he is not here. Someone being not anywhere, does it mean that he has resurrected? He could have been stolen. He could have been taken away. Okay. And uh, as I told you, these narrations are not credible because 
mention of this incident is to be found in four places. In the book of Matthew, we are told that it was the women that visited the place where Jesus is, I put it in inverted commas, body taken. When they reached here, when they reached there, the account of Matthew tells us that they found an angel. They found one angel. In uh, the account that is given to us by Luke, they found two men. Is there a difference between an angel and two men? Then in the account that is given in Mark, they found only one young man. All talking of the same incident. Of the same incident. So they then seem in the to last, be contradicting. In the last gospel, the gospel according to John, what do the women find? They find Jesus and they mistaken him to be a gardener. So you can see by yourself that these are narrations that are coming to us, but they are not credible. These are big contradictions you cannot overlook. So Jesus not being there, the men telling the women that why do you seek the living among the dead? He has risen, he is not here, does not amount to Jesus' rising from the dead. So, do you want to give an impression? Or don't you think that the fear these people had, all the four that you're talking about, John, Luke, Matthew, and, and Luke, don't you think that the fear that could have arisen in their hearts could have brought them to make such uh, contradicting statements, yet they were talking something which is true? Don't you think so? Uh, maybe yeah. if I could come in there. Okay. Jesus Christ had been sentenced to death. Okay. When you interrogate the events that took place on the cross, specifically the short duration that he stayed on the cross, and the judge, Pilate, expressing dismay that oh, could he have died in such a short time? And the uh, quickness by which they retrieved the so-called body of Jesus Christ. All of those pointed to the fact that no, he had survived death. And he was unconscious, was under treatment because herbs even were applied to his wounds. Now, the disciples might have come up with a smart idea. The moment you declare that he is dead, it means that the sentence has been carried out. One same sentence cannot be carried out twice on the same person for the same offense. Mm. So when they declare that he's dead, so whoever sees him, he has only risen from the dead, then the sentence doesn't apply any longer. But unfortunately, those who come much later, they took it for a teaching. In fact, they took it for a fact. A person who has died does not eat after coming back to life? A person who dies does not eat? Because according to what you're explaining, mm. Jesus asked for some food to eat. Yeah, to prove to his disciples that he was still alive. That he survived death on the cross. And so he's a still person alive. who has and died. And he is still a human being. So the concept of resurrection, as I told you, is based on four things. The narrations we get from the four Gospels, that he's not here, that he has risen, and I told you the evidence is self-contradicting. Then the empty tomb, the women finding no one in the tomb and finding the tomb empty. And another thing is the missing body of Jesus Christ and then the appearances that occurred after. These four are the main uh, basis on which the concept of resurrection rests. Coming to Sheikh Adam Hamid Sembajwe. Yes, please. Don't you think you could be misinterpreting these biblical scriptures? How comes the Christian world does not present these matters the way you are presenting them? Don't you think you are an odd man out? No. They came to a wrong conclusion without collaborating the events that took place. 
I would like to highlight one fact that is very important for us to understand. In the Bible and in all the narrations about the death of Jesus, we hear about a tomb. But in fact, it is a sepulchre or a cave in which Jesus Christ was placed. So we also see that Jesus Christ was, uh, I mean, herbs were applied to his wounds. Nowhere do they apply, do they treat the wounds of a dead body. So those who brought those herbs, in fact, the ladies who came the next day knew that the person they are going to pay a visit to must be a living person. So he was not dead. They knew that he was alive. That is why they took those herbs to treat him. Dead bodies are not treated, nor are they injected for that matter. So they well knew that the person they were going to meet is a living person. And then after that, Jesus goes to me, well, while they came across him, in fact, they asked, he told them that, please, he warned them, don't tell anybody that you have seen me. Now, a resurrected person, what has he got to fear? He has already defeated death. Mm. But we see Jesus Christ moving in a, a way of hiding. Moving incognito. Uh -huh. mm. But that means that, yes, he was the real person, asking I mean, for food to eat. Why would he hide? If, if he had defeated death. If he had a supernatural body, that the Roman soldiers would not do any harm. Are these facts that you are trying to present, mm. are they known to the Christian society? Mm, there are so many things which are facts but are wrongly accepted by people. And many of them, people would say that, uh, for example, I'll give you one very simple example. Ask anybody out there that where does the sun come from and where does it set? You see it comes from the east and sets in the west. But you remember your science very well. Does the sun move? It doesn't. The fact of the matter is it doesn't. It is still. So there are things which people believe in, most of the people, but that doesn't mean that because so many people believe in such a thing, so it is a fact. So our purpose is to interrogate the events which took place and arrive at a collaborative conclusion. Our dear viewers, the program you're watching is Truth Unveiled. The topic of discussion today is a resurrection and a session. For questions or comments, please email us on Africa at mta.tv. Mr. Faisal, if I may ask you, when you are presenting your view about the crucifixion and the resurrection about Jesus Christ, are you biased in any way or you are trying to present facts as they are? Are you biased in any way? <laughs> that is very interesting. Uh, why should I be biased? Because you what you are presenting mm. is really contrary to what the world knows. Yeah, and there are reasons why. It is contrary to what the world knows. There are reasons. If you allow me, I can give you an explanation. Please give us an expression. Um, we are not biased at all. Uh, we are trying to be as neutral as possible in this uh, discussion, very interesting discussion for that matter. Um, you see the Bible we have here. This is translated from the Greek language. Jesus and his disciples, their language was not Greek. So, the translation we have here, the English, the English translation, comes from the so many Greek manuscripts. And these Greek manuscripts, the earliest that was written, was written 70 years after the event of crucifixion. And according to the scholars, it is presumed that it is the gospel according to Mark. It doesn't mean that Mark himself wrote that gospel. That's why they are very careful and they say the gospel according to Mark. Okay. That is the earliest information we have. Seventy years is a long period. For, so, so whatever we have here is not uh, information which reaches us through eyewitnesses, people who witnessed these events with their own eyes. Is that very clear? I do. So, Luke, who is 
uh, considered to be the author of the gospel according to Luke. In the first verse, which introduces his book, says that there are many people who have written different accounts of what happened during the ministry of Jesus Christ. Good. And after seeing that they have written many accounts, it seemed good to me to write an account and present it to the king of his region at that time. That verse tells us that there are many written accounts concerning the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. Okay. This is not my view. This is a view which is based on a statement made by Luke. So, after coming to, after knowing that there are many accounts, a time came, the Christian community had, a, uh, had plenty of narratives concerning Jesus Christ. So they sat down and they chose some books which they considered to be official, to be reliable, and they discarded the other books. That process is known as the process of the canonization of the Bible. So, those books which were left out, thanks to archaeological ex excavations, because each day that passes, there is a discovery made. Those books have come to light. They have given us overwhelming information. They have given us information about things we did not know. You understand? I don't get you. And in the history of the Roman Catholic Church, as the founder of the Hamadiya Muslim uh, community says in one of his books called The Fountain of Christianity, he has mentioned that he has a copy of the Bible which contains the books that were considered to be reliable bound together with the books that are considered to be apocryphal, heretical, books that were discarded, that were considered unreliable. If I may ask Sheikh Adam Hamid Sembaju, yes, please. do you agree with what your colleague is presenting? Yes. What is important at this time and moment is for us to bring together the various teachings, stories, narrations, uh, verses of the Holy Bible, and uh, arrive at such a conclusion, say, in the topic that we are discussing about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and see that do they indeed come to the same conclusion. And that is what we uh, have been doing, and that's what we are doing right now. Because uh, some of these things, there are uh, many of them, if you try to or narrate them one against the other, you see to it that they don't fit in properly. Or the conclusion is not that what it is supposed to be. In the case of Jesus, that is what exactly we are doing. Now let us focus our attention on the concept of ascension. The ascension of Jesus Christ to heaven, it is uh, written in three books of the whole Bible. Luke, Mark and Acts. Exactly. What belief do you hold about that concept? With regard to the ascension yes. of Jesus Christ? Yes. Okay. You have uh, rightly mentioned that uh, it is only Luke, Mark, and, and the book of Acts yes. that mention the concept of ascension. It is not mentioned anywhere else. And for our viewers, I will employ this opportunity and read out the verses that talk of the ascension of Jesus Christ. I will start with uh, the gospel according to Luke. Luke tells us that while Jesus blessed them, he parted from them. That's how he narrates that event. Yeah. And was carried up into heaven. Now, 
the word was carried up into heaven according to the consensus of uh, Christian scholars themselves is an addition that found its way later in the Bible. Okay. This is not my view. If you take time and open uh, the English translation of the Bible we have here, of course I told you that these are translated from the so many Greek manuscripts. Now if you open that Bible and you read that verse, under that verse there is a footnote that the words was carried up into heaven is, an as is a later addition. It is written on the footnote and it is not to be found in the most ancient, reliable manuscripts. Even the manuscripts are mentioned, Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus. These are the earliest, most ancient, and most reliable manuscripts. They are compelled to include that footnote there. If they don't do that, then they have not done justice to a proper translation. So the actual verse would read that while Jesus blessed them, he parted from them. It would be like I was talking with you, and we ended our discussions. And everybody you went your way. I went my way. Sure. So the part was carried up into heaven is a later addition, not according to me, but according to facts. Okay. The second mention of ascension is to be found in the book or, or the gospel according to Mark. This one is very interesting. Sure. Because we are talking of the last chapter of the gospel according to Mark. That chapter has 20 verses. It has what? 20, 20 verses. verses. So if you read from the first verse of the 16th chapter of Mark, and you come to the 8th verse, the last verse reads, the women fled from the tomb. When they discovered that the tomb was empty, the body was missing, they fled from the tomb. They were confused. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. They said nothing to anyone because, because they, were they were afraid. They must have seen something strange that was considered to be, co uh, that was supposed to be concealed and it frightened them. Maybe they saw Jesus coming back to life from the unconsciousness he had fallen into. That's where the official gospel according to Mark ends, from verse 1 up to verse 8. Now, the subsequent verses, verse 9 up to 20, in which the 19th verse says that after the Lord has spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. These verses from verse 9 up to verse 20, these uh, were added later. There is a very big footnote in any English translation of the Bible that says that they are not to be found in the most ancient in the earliest manuscripts, the Greek manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. So we are left with Acts, the book of Acts, what in which it? ascension is mentioned. Okay. Now all scholars agree that the author of the gospel according to Luke is the same author of the gospel according uh, of the of the book of Acts. Is this, all the scholars agree on that. So we have ascension not mentioned anywhere. These are later additions. So Jesus did not ascend to heaven. <laughs> does, human, uh, does a human being ascend to heaven? Can a human being ascend to heaven? Well, that is a better question to our Christian brothers. Mr. Adam Hamid Sembaji. Yes, please. I want you to tell the, the viewers 
If Jesus did not ascend to heaven, where did he go? Jesus Christ himself was very clear on this. In fact, I'll quote two verses to you. In one he says that I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. By the time Jesus came, there were only two tribes of the Israelis, subclans, and uh, uh, 10 of them had migrated. So he went in search of them. And according to, his, to Jesus Christ himself, that was his prime responsibility to deliver his message to those who had gone to the diaspora. Okay. So he went after them into the far east and the near east, and he delivered his message to them. Many of them were abiding in Iran, in Afghanistan, in uh, some northern areas of Pakistan, in India, and uh, he went in search of them and he delivered that message to them. Not only that one. At another instant, again in the Holy Bible, Jesus Christ is quoted to have said that there are other sheep who are known in this flock. They should hear my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. So Jesus Christ, his prime responsibility was to unite all the Jews, those who were still in Palestine and those who had gone to the diaspora, to unite them together by conveying his message to them because by conveying the message to only two of them, he would not have done justice to his mission. So the mission of Jesus was accomplished by him going after those Jews who had gone, uh, 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 who had gone eastwards to convey the message to him. So, yes, indeed, Jesus Christ, uh, after praying to God the Almighty, and he survived the accursed death on the cross, he was treated. He said goodbye to his, uh, uh, to his disciples, and uh, he went eastwards in search of the other uh, tribes of the Jews, and he delivered his message to them, and uh, by the grace of God, he was a real successful messenger of God who accomplished his mission very well. If I may ask you, for the benefit of our viewers, is the resurrection and accession of Jesus Christ to heaven a mockery to the laws of nature in any way? It is in one way because it is a mistake. It is a mistake of judgment. Uh, people did not relate the events clearly to see to which uh, conclusion they point. Because the Jews whom Jesus Christ said that they were his primary uh, constituency to whom he had to convey this message, the lost sheep, they were not uh, in heaven. If he says that I, I did not come but the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and if he says that he wants those also who had gone out there to hear his voice so that he may unite them and there will be one flock and one shepherd, Jesus Christ. But those were not in heaven. They were scattered all over. And we have seen in our very recent history that many Jews who had spread in all of those countries, they are all being collected together and going back to Israel. Now we can know that they came as far as uh, Ethiopia. We know that they went as far as Kashmir. And indeed, archaeological and historical facts have proved that yes, indeed, Jesus went up to the Himalayas. He went up to the hills of Kashmir in India. And that's where he died a natural death after accomplishing his mission, which was entrusted to him by God the Almighty when he delivered the message. And all of them had his voice, and they all accepted his message. Thank you very much. Mr. Faisal, I want to ask you something. According to you, did the disciples see a harsh nation in this matter when they went to the tomb? What happened? Why did, these people, why did the, the ladies that you mentioned about when they went to the tomb, why did they come, come out when they were silent? What happened? Was it a harsh nation that they saw? Did they go to a wrong tomb? What happened? No, there were not uh, hallucinations. There, no, there, there were no hallucinations. And uh, according to the narratives we have in the New Testament, these uh, were facts. That is why I would say that the concept of uh, resurrection and ascension is uh, not a, a fact, but it is fiction. Because they found Jesus Christ, and they mistook him to be a gardener. And Jesus Christ gives them instructions that don't tell anyone, but tell my disciples 
to meet me in Galil because it was not safe in Jerusalem. You understand? I do get you. So these are facts. These are not, uh, they are not myths. They are facts. So I would uh, maybe conclude uh, I, uh, my, uh, our, our discussion by saying that if Jesus Christ had indeed died an accursed death, an accursed death on the cross, that would mean that he failed in his mission. And if he had not traveled to the east so that the other sheep of the house of Israel, the ten tribes that had uh, dispersed, that had gone into the diaspora, if he had not followed them where they had gone, then he would have, he, he would have failed in his mission. Thank you very much. Sheikh Adam Hamid Sembaju, in one minute. Yes, please. When you resent the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his ascension to heaven, don't you mean to be disrespectful in any way? No, we are factual in what we present because we present hard evidence, biblical references, in one minute. historical references, and uh, archaeological evidence has also been represented. It has been very uh, and helpful. All of these point to one fact <coughs> that yes, Indeed, Jesus did not die an accursed death on the cross. Yes, Jesus, since he did not die on the cross, so there was no resurrection and there was no ascension. But yes, Jesus Christ fulfilled his mission as he had foretold. And he went after those ten tribes of the house of Israel, delivered his message, and he died a natural death way far away in India, in Kashmir, where he again delivered the message to the lost ship of the house of Israel, and he died a successful prophet of God. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Our dear beloved viewers, we have come to the end of today's program. However, it is important to note that according to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Jesus did not resurrect, neither did he ascend to heavens. The journey to search for truth is indeed endless. And it is indeed profiting, depending on the much you strive in it. For questions or comments, thoughts or observations, email us on africa at mta.tv. Once again, thank you for your viewership. See you next time. Thank you very much. Inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum هذا صراط مستقيم